All visualization techniques are substitutions for the real thing. From very early on, since the first king wanted a huge castle, architects and designers have been struggling to help people understand what the future was going to hold. From simple sketches to scale models, using more contemporary techniques, 3D rendering and photo simulation, they're all substitutes for a built reality. It's super, super impractical to build something and then ask for changes. All of these approaches that we've been using for decades and decades are a substitution. And VR is the next evolution in that series. Virtual reality provides this really interesting evolution that we finally, for the first time, can start to step out of 2D. Everything, you know, aside from scale models, has been very literally a 2D expression of a 3D place. And for the first time, we can start to kind of touch it in a, that third dimension. But I'd like to first talk about where we've been and how we got to this point. Early 90s was the first time I think computer hardware started to meet commercially available software that you could pull off a shelf. The Macintosh LC was one of the first ones that we had at home. And Model Shop, I very specifically remember being one of the first pieces of 3D software I used. In the mid-90s, things really started to change. Computing power advanced significantly, and software, Strata Studio Pro was one that I got a lot of use out of, that allowed us to start to really dig in and create outstanding games in the late 90s and early 2000s that software and hardware really hit the ground running and everything was about eye candy. How glitzy and polished and realistic can we make simulations. I think that the idea was really to sell. Everything felt like a marketing effort to pitch people on how great this concept was. And yes, there's a place for that, but I, I think the boat was a little misaligned. It was more about overwhelming the experience and just providing eye candy and not exactly understanding. In the mid-2000s, I think we made, as a profession, some good strides. Photo simulations, and especially kind of the photosim buildup, became of a planning process. At the same time, SketchUp was starting to gain some notoriety. It helped dramatically when a little company called Google bought them that really started to push them out there and they started to become an industry standard for urban design and planning and enabled us to study these concepts and do design development in a 3D place super efficiently. Late 2000s, the recession hit. And that changed things. And I really appreciate that the prior decades set us up for this in a really meaningful way. Because budgets just were dramatically slashed, we weren't able to even attempt to do those really glitzy high-end simulations. And there became a focus. Where before it was about this full, polished, detailed expression that was overwhelming, now it became about understanding what we could present to the public and decision makers that would help them understand it well enough and be super, super cost effective. This is where I think photo simulations and especially SketchUp really blossomed within the industry. In the early 2010s, this trend continued. And I think as expectations, which is a big part of all of this, within the industry and within the citizenry, saw that the software was easier to use and more approachable, they were willing to ask and insist on being part of the process. And I saw a dramatic use, uh, increase in use of the software for live 3D charrettes and really workshops in which we could engage people directly. Mid-2010s, Autodesk Revit already has been changing things. BIM has become a, a very synonymous word, especially in the architectural community. And Lumion came online as well. And this found this niche, so there's a little bit of a resurgence of this really polished uh, graphic style where you could take architectural models that you're already creating, get great 3D content out of them, move them into Lumion, do very nice landscape renderings around those, and present a very polished picture. And they are captivating. The software has also sort of influenced the direction and expectations that the public has. So just to kind of gather all these trend cycles together, starting 1990 is really computers started to become much more available. 3D modeling software was just starting. 1995, one thing worth mentioning is when Toy Story was released. That started to spur 
3D visualization as being mainstream. And you can see there, I think that there was a tremendous spike in the expectations within the industry for its use. And that really went up to about 2005, maybe a little later uh, when the recession happened. And obviously that needed to fall off. 2015 is when Oculus and Vive started to come to market. And we're only three years into that cycle. And I predict that there'll be a pretty significant expectation for this technology to be used in the field.